What would make someone want to move from California to become a middle school teacher in one of the poorest areas of Baltimore, Maryland? Take a look. Go over to your worksheet now. Can you read that question up at the top nice and loud for us? Hi, my name's Wider Oak, but my kids call me Mr. O, and I'm the humanities teacher at City Springs Elementary Middle School in Baltimore. There are neighborhoods within Baltimore that have been under-resourced and underserved for centuries based on political decisions made, be it segregated housing or redlining certain neighborhoods. And so what that has led to is that our students come from the highest poverty rates out of any school in Baltimore City. Since I've been teaching, I've had students who have been homeless every single year. I lost a student to gun violence. I've had a couple of students give birth to children. One went into labor in my classroom. Um, and so for me, it's trying to show as much empathy as I can and just be a listening ear. A lot of times, what our students like is just someone to hear them. Growing up in Baltimore has been very challenging. It just made me strong and independent. And my mother always told me to be independent. Baltimore has a lot of people with big dreams. I want to graduate college so that I can change a lot of things. Our principal, our school staff, all our teachers really love our students. And having them function from that strong place of love has meant that our students get a lot of support on a daily basis. I buy a lot of independent reading books for my students. I believe that the smartest people in the world carry a book with them at all times, and that's what I tell my students. So anytime a kid asks me if they can get a book, I'm always like, yeah, I can go on Amazon right now and order it. That's important to me. There are so many times where I wish I could do more. You know, I wish I could say that all my middle schoolers who graduate are still in high school. That's not the case. I wish I could say every family that's asked me for help, I've been able to provide that help for, and that's not the case. I, I can't sleep a lot at night because I think so much about my students and what they're going through and whether I did enough for them that day. Teaching is an honor. I know that my community here in Baltimore has given me the responsibility to educate their children. And that is something I don't take lightly at all. I want to go to my dream college, UCLA, and be a doctor. I want to become a photographer and video editor. I want to become a contractor. I want to be a veterinarian so that I can give back to my city. I'll do what it takes. From Baltimore, Maryland, please welcome Mr. Rowe. I know, because nice. we surprised you. You didn't know you were going to be on I the show. I had no idea until minutes ago. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, by the way, you're going to sit in that chair that you're watching right now. Yeah. I couldn't handle it. Well, handle it. you're awesome. You're, Thank you're you. amazing. I mean, Thank you. the kids are uh, amazing. Really, it's you're okay. amazing. It's all the kids. So. Um, I, and, and, you know, I love teachers, and, and you say that teaching there has changed you. How so? Um, I've been teaching for five years now, and it has shaped the way I view the entire world. It's shaped me as a person. It's helped me understand patience and resilience, and the honor to teach children every day is something that is just unbelievable that I've been given that great honor. And how, how, do, you, how do you motivate them? So it's a 30% dropout rate, is that right? In, in the community that Yeah, in the community. With. So how do you motivate them? How do you keep them interested? <laughs> it's all about opening doors uh, for our students and giving them points of access that they might not normally have, whether it's meeting someone they wouldn't normally get to meet, going somewhere they wouldn't normally get to go. And I believe the more access points we can give them, uh, the better experience they'll have. So what are, what are the biggest challenges uh, facing you in, in City Springs? I, access to opportunities. You know, it's, it's 2017 in America, and we have kids who don't have equal access to opportunities. And I get very emotional about that, because it, it's, it's not fair. It's yeah. not fair that we aren't able to always provide enough access to resources, enough books for our students, yeah. enough field trips that they can go on. And then so access to opportunities is a huge challenge that we face every day. And your, goal, your goals for your students are what? Well, my short-term goal is to get them those opportunities. Mm -hmm. yeah, meeting the city councilman, the state's attorney, you know, came in and visited them. So meeting people who will change their lives for the better. Mm -hmm. And then long-term, it's to have them give back to Baltimore in, mm -hmm. in the way that suits them best. You know, Chantel wants to be a veterinarian and wants to open a veterinarian hospital in Baltimore because she says there's stray dogs and cats that need my help here. 
or the students who want to become lawyers or doctors, and they don't want to do it across the world or across the country. They, they want to do it in their community. Yeah. And that just, that's just amazing for me. We're back with Wyatt, or Mr. O, and his mom's in the audience, and you didn't even know she was going to be I here. I had no idea. So, yeah, what a, what a great kid you raised. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, all right, so when you hear, we just watched the tape before you came out, about the, uh, your students and, and what they want to be when they grow up, uh, you know, it, it, must, it, it must make you think, well, then, I have to continue to do this yeah. because they have to actually, this, she has to become a vet. It's so true. I, what happens in classrooms today impacts what happens in the world tomorrow. Like, I, I honestly believe that. If yes. you fill your classroom with love today, you're going to fill the world with love tomorrow. Yep. And so... <laughs> it, That's it's it. amazing. That's so great. And, and so true, so true. Well, thanks to Cisco Video Technology, we're going to check in with Jeannie, who is with some of your students right now. And, uh, hi! Oh, hi, Kane. Hi, Kane. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to ask you guys what Mr. O means to you. So tell me what he means to you. <laughs> to me, Mr. O, <laughs> Mr. O is family, and I've been here since kindergarten, and, and him and this school really helped me understand that what I do now will impact my future. <laughs> Mr. O, to me, is very trustworthy. I can trust him with all my issues and challenges that I go through at home, and he gives such great advice that I don't have to go through those challenges anymore. So, so it must mean everything to you to know you have this guy in your corner and that he wants to see you succeed. That must really help you. Yes, it means, it means everything to me. Um, that Mr. O has my back, and he's always here. And Mr. O is helping me achieve my big dream and um, rewrite history in our own way and show that people is more to Baltimore than me to I. Um, Mr. O, he is very important to me because I, th I don't have the support system at home. Like, when I come from school and go home, I don't, like, really have no one there. So to have, like, Mr. O there at school in the morning, and, like, it's just very supportive. And it's, like, I, very, I appreciate it a lot. And this is why we all love him, because he's just very supportive. I love him. I love him so much. All right, well. Uh, uh. So... Shutterfly cares about supporting schools in need, and they want to give you, uh, your school, a check for $25,000. <laughs> so I think they have it there. Oh, my God. 